Heavy artillery bombards Sirte, one of the last remaining strongholds of former Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. The interim government forces have been hampered by the large number of civilians, but say victory is a matter of time. Heavy artillery shells scream across the Libyan desert. These massive guns are being used to bombard the town of Sirte, one of the last remaining strongholds of former leader Muammar Gaddafi. Fighters loyal to Libya's transitional government have been trying to take the town for days. But despite heavy artillery and support from NATO warplanes, they have had little success. NTC commanders say the advance on Sert, Gaddafi's hometown, has been hampered by the presence of large numbers of civilians. Still, they're predicting a quick end to the siege. The matter of liberating Sirt completely is a matter of days away, not more. Sirt and Bani Walid are the last major towns still loyal to Gaddafi, who is believed to be on the run inside. Thousands of activists of Pakistan's largest religious party, Jamaat Islami, held anti-US rally in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province with the aim to denounce what they call growing U.S. intervention in Pakistan through the U.S. drone attacks and Pakistani military offensives against suspected Taliban militants in the country's tribal regions. Anti-American sentiment ran high as more people from different walks of life came to join the rally, chanting slogans against the U.S. and the incumbent Pakistani government, which they held responsible for the current unrest and instability across the country. What our Americans have been doing for the last two or three days uh, they have created a mess and uh, I don't think that that mess can be uh, classified in any way. So I think uh, our message to the masses is that they should come to one to one to Americans and the movement launched by Jamaat Islami in the name of Go America Go, they should be part and parcel of that movement because that is the only way to get liberated and to have independence. The new wave of anti-American emotions took sharp rise following the recent continued U.S. pressure on Pakistan to launch military operations against militants which it believes operate from sanctuaries in Pakistan's North Waziristan tribal agency bordering Afghanistan. Besides, the Obama administration has also increased frequency of drone strikes against suspected militants in Pakistan's tribal regions. Since August 2008, the U.S. has carried out hundreds of drone attacks in Pakistan's tribal belt, killing more than 2,000 people, mostly innocent women and children. They have carried on forward the Washington Directive, and uh, we have opposed each and every operation in each and every area of Pakistan, and uh, for America, uh, uh, letting the blood of uh, uh, Pakistanis flow, uh, we, are, uh, we have never favored that, and uh, all these operations were uh, uh, under American directives. People as well as government of Pakistan have strongly protested the attacks, saying they are killing innocent civilians besides being violating the country's sovereignty. The party leaders have strongly opposed the U.S. drone strikes and the military offensives in the country, saying that thousands of innocent civilians have been killed in the attacks and operations directed by Washington. Pakistani officials say more than 35,000 Pakistanis, including some 5,000 security personnel, have lost their lives in bombings and terrorist attacks since the country became an ally in the so-called global war against terror. I uh, am very disappointed but not surprised by the president's speech. The truth of the matter is that Barack Obama is playing games with the Palestinian-Israeli issue. Uh, he is a tool of the Israeli lobby. Uh, that's bad news, and it's doubly bad news for the Palestinian people uh, that the uh, Republican candidates, with the exception of Ron Paul, the only exception, are basically tools of the Israeli lobby themselves. The bottom line is that the United States has no serious commitment to solving or addressing the grievances of the Palestinian people any more than the United States has a, uh, a goodwill plan and a workable political plan for uh, dealing with uh, anything else in the Middle East, including its relationship with Iran. Uh, Philip Giraldi of the Na Council for the National Interest had a recent story underscoring that the ultimate losers, however, in this Palestinian tragedy may well prove to be the American people. 
because as long as we are doing Israel's bidding, and as long as the Israeli lobby controls the American government and the American media to the extent that they do, uh, the American people can plan on paying more outlandish taxes uh, to continue funding uh, Israel's lobby. The American people will continue to be spending more on military defense uh, simply because we are going to uh, be involved in, a, in an armaments production race uh, in conjunction with Israel to defend policies that are absolutely indefensible. And we have a situation, of course, as well, where the policies that the United States is pursuing on this Palestinian question, as well as many other questions in the Middle East, at the behest of the Israeli lobby, are designed to create exponentially more enemies for the American government and the American people all the time. The tragedy is that many Americans have nothing to do with these policies. They are prisoners of the Israeli lobby, and they are prisoners of an American government that basically is doing what Israel wants, not what is interest in the interest of the American people or the Palestinians or the Iranians or any other group of people. It's a very sickening situation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, September 26, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part three of this news bulletin. Uh, my website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also on YouTube, my channel is ddarko2012. That's ddarko2012. Okay, I'm going to get going here. I also am going to um, go into a fourth part. I haven't done that in a while just because I have a lot of news. And it says here, Gaddafi loyalists push NTC out of CERT. So it says here, um, the NTC fighters have been forced to retreat from the city of CERT following strong resistance from loyalists to um, Gaddafi. And this is uh, also, what was it, uh, Ben Wali. They also retreated from there, but their um, tails between their legs. So I don't think they're going to be overthrown uh, anytime soon. It says Gaddafi gunmen across border from Algeria to attack revolutionary forces. Don't know if this is actually true because it's coming from the mail online uh, here, but it says cross-border attacks show loyalist forces have managed to escape the country and regroup and collect weapons, bol uh, bolstering fears the North African nation could face a protracted insurgency. Now, th it's just like what the guy was just talking about with the Palestinian thing. Uh, the powers that be, the, these, and it's not really the powers that be uh, either. I mean, they do have a face. They're called the Project for New American Century. They're on both political parties, um, Council on Foreign Relations, um, you have the Bilderberg Group, the um, uh, other groups such as the Club of Rome, and then you have all of these uh, little uh, consortiums and, and private, uh, like the Rand Corporation. They they do have a face. They're not just some shadow, um, shadowy uh, uh, group. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and basically, they, they know what this what is going to happen when they go in there and start bombing uh, people. Right? They're gonna, not going to like it, like in Pakistan. They're not going to like it. Now, all of a sudden, the U.S. is going to start saying, oh, you're bad. You're supporting and harboring terrorists. No, you've bombed the women and children for how many years now, and you haven't done what you said you were going to do. You have not fulfilled your contract. You can't just sit in a sovereign nation and start bombing their women and children and keep doing it and expect them to just with open arms greet you for liberating them okay that's just bullshit and people uh, they'd be dumb to to agree to that uh... but either way yeah so protracted insurgency they knew it was going to happen they knew there were going to be terrorists that were already in libya that were against gaddafi and uh... that's right gaddafi wasn't supporting the terrorists they're gonna they were against the al-qaeda and then were working against them uh... And it says here as we move on about the bodies, Libya rebels create humanitarian disaster, then blame it on Gaddafi. And uh, we already, well, I already covered a week ago about the bodies that were being dug up by the NTC and that, um, and it was uh, atrocities carried out by the uh, NTC. It says here, Libya NTC concocts mass grave story in brazen uh, propaganda ploy. So BBC is reported citing no evidence to back the claim that a mass grave containing over 1,200 bodies has been found in Tripoli's Abu Salim prison complex. Attempts to tie the finding to an equally concocted Abu Salim prison massacre as it claims that the bodies are those of inmates supposedly killed in 96. And of course, why is this? Because, well, um, they're losing support for it and Gaddafi and them aren't quitting. Because, like I said before, a majority of the Libyans actually support Gaddafi, so it's not surprising to me. 
It's also not surprising uh, that what? Oh, bin Laden got killed in Pakistan because what? There was a lot of anti-American uh, support, like I said, because they're killing their uh, their civilians. And then Afghanistan, they keep killing their civilians. So what do they do? Well, well, again, like before, I just said it in my last set of videos, just my last set of videos, what do they do? Well, let's see. The CIA allows themselves to be attacked. They did it before, after they were in the spotlight for uh, 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 killing almost 50 people after a drone strike, and basically they had to do damage control. And so um, they went in there and strapped a, a, a bomb to one of their own little, quote, Afghan informants, one of their trusted uh, operatives, an Afghan native, and he, you know, suicide bombed himself. So, and then we have the same thing going on here. U.S.-led forces kill 19 Afghan civilians. Then Malin on Afghanistan, we're going to be there longer than 2014. That's why they build a, a humongous prison uh, in Afghanistan recently. And also in Iraq, they're uh, extending the Iraqi embassy as well, the U.S. embassy. It's one of the biggest in the world. It says, but, oh, but they're pulling out the troops, right. But do you think there's not going to be private contractor mercenaries there making a big buck? after stealing your tax dollars to pay for it. Afghan national uh, employed by U.S. attacks, Americans killing one, so there you go. Talking about Afghan employed by U.S. government killed one American and wounded another in an attack on the CIA office in Kabul. So of course this is why, because support is, they're losing support. It's all about attacking yourself. Israel is big on that. All options on the table on Pakistan. So Lindsey Graham, sellout for the United States, said uh, he had tough words for Pakistan, word the nation that they should seize, seize uh, see, uh, what is it, assisting the Hakwini network in attacks on American forces in Afghanistan, saying that the U.S. should consider steps to end that threat. We have to put all options on the table. That means uh, uh, just, you know, killing anything and, and everything that has life in it as U.S., Pakistan, and of course, what is my solution? Don't support government, and uh, it won't happen. As U.S., Pakistan rift widens, China tells U.S. to respect Pakistan's uh, sovereignty. And just like uh, the big entourage of security that most of these sellouts have around them, um, including big walls so that their citizens can't come and approach them, um, and they hide behind these tinted windows. Tony Blair dined in a New York restaurant, and men were seen tasting food before, he ser before it was served to him because he's such an important, honorable man. That's why they did it. Uh, God only knows the sky would fall uh, if, if he died. David Cameron makes a call to arms, or if he got food poisoning, makes a call to arms at the UN. So it says here, David uh, Cameron last night demanded world leaders to seize the Arab Spring's massive opportunity. Like Rahm Emanuel said, you never want to let an opportunity um, or a good crisis go to waste. Iraq completes a deal to buy F-16, so after it's all said and done, after uh, you call to arms and take a... Uh, 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 advantage, you go in there and you sell them F-16s like they did when they sold Saddam uh, all those biological weapons and went in there and killed them, supposedly. U.S. drone raids injured dozens in Somalia, some more killings in Somalia than Somalia drone crashes in Al-Shabaab controlled town of Somalia, so they shot that fucker down. Somalia, and part of my French, Al-Shabaab moves famine victims back to their home. And those that are being sent back are being uh, distributed cars, um, basically to allow them to receive aid at their homes. It says reports are also indicate some are happy to return as long as the aid is delivered. So basically they're trying to protect these people and get them the hell out of the city because of what they're doing. They're killing people, these drones, the CIA. Uh, Anti-U.S. protests held in Ghana. Hundreds of people in Ghana staged a protest rally against NATO. And then we have Turkish opposition against NATO's radar yet they just put in a missile shield so I again I don't get Turkey Turkey lectures Syria on killing militants that kills its own militants talking about the Kurds BBC front for British spy agency so Iran's intelligence minister says British intelligence service used BBC as a cover for anti-Iranian activities Lebanon nabs Egyptian spying for Israel it's not the first time then two American hikers blast Iran for our deal it's all your fault well what the hell were you doing hiking uh, in Iran as a Jew. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I don't think they're totally against them, but I'm just saying, why would you go hiking, of all places, in Iran? I don't know. Maybe you should check yourself. Maybe you're a spy. 
because that's what they accused you of. Iranian waiter to be blinded in one eye is retribution for hurling acid in a man's uh, face five years ago. And of course, um, she sanctioned it and she asked for revenge. China says the Dalai Lama's successor is illegal. Monks self-immolate, basically burn themselves over the Dalai Lama feud. And then, of course, China charged the last monks who set themselves on fire. So go figure. This is GGN.